Hello, friends. This is Dave Kading, and I'm going to be doing an episode all on my own today, talking about the top five reasons why I joined Treehouse Eyes on the Myopia Podcast. Welcome to the Myopia Podcast, where we give you the latest myopia research, clinical topics, and industry insights. Make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all awesome myopia content. And now to our host, a massive myopia manager himself, Dr. David Kading. Hey friends, so this is an exciting episode for me because I get to share with you something that I've been uh, I've been keeping for a while and haven't really uh, proclaimed and shot out to the world yet. And that is that my practice has officially joined Treehouse Eyes. My journey with Treehouse began years ago when uh, Gary first uh, approached me and told me about this idea that he was coming up with and how they were launching and how they had quite a few practices already going. And we kind of spitballed it. And I was kind of like, you know, I can do this on my own. I don't really need somebody else. And uh, the reality is you can, you can do myopia management on your own. You don't have to have anybody helping you. Uh, and um I've just watched it with admiration as Treehouse has continued to grow the offerings that they're offering to practices and how they have been uh, really enhancing what they're doing and uh, really thought, hey, this is a great opportunity for me to look into things a little bit more and uh, delve into uh, my myopia at a different level. And so... Um, I recently found out that our practice is one of the top myopia practices in the country. Um, we're not the top by any means, and there's people that do way more than us, especially practices that have uh, many, many doctors. But um, I was a little, little depressed, and I got to thinking, holy cow, if my practice is one of the top, and we're doing how many we're doing, hundreds um, how, uh, how are kids getting treated? We need to be treating thousands. Uh, and I just had to, had to take a step back and say, where do I want my, my myopia to be? Where do I want to be in 2024 and 2025? And what are the things that I need to do in order to get there? And, um, what's the easiest path for me to make that happen? And so I, uh, I looked at uh, other organizations that were helpful in the myopia space, consulting or software companies, and, uh, you know, really dug in and uh, grilled my friends, uh, Gary and Matt and other triage doctors. And I said, this is, uh, this has got to be something that we, we do. And we figure out how, uh, how you're going to help us get to the goals that we have. As uh, many of you know, we've had uh, Tan Mai, we've had, uh, we've had Kevin, we've had uh, uh, Kevin Chan, we've, we've had uh, uh, Matt Ording, we've had several Treehouse uh, uh, employees or doctors on the podcast. And uh, so I feel like I have gotten to know them pretty well. And I thought, hey, man, I need to be part of this family. And so I want to give you the top five reasons why we joined. There's many more, but the top five reasons why we joined Trios Eyes. So number one is uh, we wanted to uh, be in the arena where we're nearly doubling our myopia management every year. When you're doing, you know, 20 myopia managements a year, um, doubling is not difficult. But when you are doing hundreds and hundreds of myopia management, to double means that you're going to be going outside of your own patient base in order to accomplish that. The reality is, although there are some kids that come into my practice who don't do myopia management that have myopia, that is a really small number. Um, we've either converted them or they've been chased away because they don't want to do myopia management. For some reason, we just don't have that many left that are coming in who are not doing myopia management. And we'll get some every year, uh, but not to the measure that we want to be. And so I want to be in the thousands in the next couple of years. And I just realized I can't do that on my own. And I need somebody who can come in and help me on the marketing side to get there. 
And so um, that is one of the things that Treehouse does really well. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a, in a little bit. Um, but that is the number one reason that we joined Treehouse Eyes is because we wanted to go from great to way even better in the number that we were doing. And um, if that's something you want to do, then then I would say stand in the future and look backwards. And what do you need to get there? What do you need to do to be 5x of where you're at right now, 3x of where you are right now? Like, what's that going to take? And what's the fastest way for you to get there? The number two reason is we needed to clean up our house. We needed to sharpen our sword um, as a team. And uh, really, the reality is um, we do our process pretty well, right? Um, but I think we all say that we want to look at our forms and refine our forms. We want to make a video and educate our patients better. We want to be able to have a process for the people who don't convert to myopia management and bring them into myopia management. I think back to the video, The Founder, if you've ever watched that movie where Ray Kroc goes and observes the McDonald brothers and their McDonald's and how they tore the whole place apart. They developed a process, you know, from the moment they order a hamburger until it's like right in front of you is seconds. And he's like, what is this? And they're like, that's your order and the process of making it. And I just want my process to be smooth and clean and efficient um, so that we can better take care of our patients and uh, take care of more of them. So we just wanted to sharpen our sword. And so that's the number two reason why we joined Treehouse Eyes. Number three is I wanted world-class experts and colleagues uh, in my camp holding me accountable. I wanted the ability um, to, to really hang out and, and work with like-minded individuals who myopia is their clinical focus. Uh, it's their research focus. You see, Treehouse has a, an advisory board of the top myopia people in the world, and they come together and they come up with clinical expertise of how should we implement all this research into practice today? What would what would should we do? There there may not be a study that exactly tells us what to do. So in the minds of the top researchers, until that research comes out, otherwise, what should we be doing? And I do that in clinical practice. Many of you are going to education, you're watching um, you know, videos, you're listening to my podcast, you're talking to other doctors. Um, and I just wanted the refinement. I just wanted the best in-class myopia for my patients. And so uh, how can I be better and what can that do? And I read hundreds of papers, right? Like myopia papers are something that we read all the time, but there's um, there's thousands of papers written about every year on myopia. Uh, there's, you know, hundreds of definitions alone. So how do we take that and put it into practice? And I wanted the best in class from the researchers. And then who are the doctors who are like, Hey, I am going to be part of an organization, which is all about sharing and community. And I'm going to make your practice better and I'm going to make the doctors that are around me better because rising tides raise all ships and the doctors in, in treehouse just get better and better and better because they're pushing each other to be excellent. I kind of use the analogy of if you're a really good rock star and you join an organization with other really good rock stars, your band is phenomenal. And each of you becomes better and better of a musician when you're playing with others. So who is a community of the best of the best? A big part of my practice is our team and our collaboration. We've got four pillars that our practice stands upon, being one, myopia being one of them. But I looked at my team and I'm like, what do they know about myopia? I teach them. I hang out with them. I talk with them. They know this is a service and they know why we do it. But is their definition of myopia the same as mine? When they talk to somebody on the street or at the front desk or in the back, are they, are they saying the words that I want to say? And are they using the terminology that is going to give our capture rate that higher three or four or 15%? 
What is it that they need to be saying? What are the words that are coming out of their mouth? And how do I get them on the same page? And that takes an incredible amount of training. It takes consistent getting on board with them. Well, with Treehouse, they bring in a team of people that trains and gets everybody on the same page. And then when I get new new team members, I can have them sit down with a, tea, a treehouse person and be like, hey, can you spend some time, right? If I want to have a, uh, a team meeting with a treehouse expert, they'll get on the phone with me. They'll get on a Zoom call or they'll even come into the office and they'll be like, hey, hey let's circle the wagons. Let's get everybody back on, on board. Let's get everybody in alignment. And uh, so having my team on board with me, having a new staff member come on, being able to jo join and get get on board with what we're doing in the office is huge. Having my myopia coordinator, that person who spends their time doing myopia, having a community of other myopia coordinators that they can go to uh, is just spectacular and phenomenal. And so that's a, a really big win for me. They came in and they like, you know, Dave, what, what, what do you think? Like you, you do a ton of myopia. I'm like, let's imagine we don't do any like start from the ground up, let's rebuild this whole thing. And we have done that. And uh, my team has shared with me how much cleaner everything is now that we've brought Treehouse into the practice. And that's, that's what I want to hear, right? That's really exciting. Um, I wanted to increase my efficiency, um, which will yield a better profitability for my practice. And as my practice becomes more profitable, it will reduce the price for patients. That's uh, that's you know the number the number five reason is I want to be able to make more money and lower the cost for my patients. We have to continue to look to ways to make myopia mainstream. How do we get more people doing myopia management? Right now, the cost is, a, is bearable. It's approachable, but things are going to continue to go up in cost. And I want to continue to find ways to be able to encounter more kids. And so by having my efficiency locked in, by having my team on board, by having the process as smooth as can be, um, you or your practice or I could just you know, reap those huge benefits financially uh, from that profitability, or, you know, we can do that and really help a lot more patients. And so that's a big part of this too, right? If you're going to go from hundreds to thousands, you have to open things up a lot more. And so from an efficiency standpoint, we need to be better so that we can increase the, the dollars and uh, be able to really make things even more accessible. So, um, you know, we need to double or triple or quadruple our myopia numbers. Number one, we want to clean up our house, uh, sharpen our sword. Um, number three, we want that access to world-class experts. Um, number four is we want to have our whole team and everybody in the office on board. And then number five is I want to increase my efficiency and profitability so that we can make things even more accessible to more patients. That's the number five reason we uh, joined uh, Treehouse Eyes. There's a lot more. A big one is the marketing, right? Uh, I mentioned earlier that I want to I want to get into the thousands and I can't do that with my patients alone and so we've developed you know over the years some things that we do to bring in more patients but having some of the some top marketers right Gary Gerber is a, a brilliant mind in marketing and eye care Matt Ording, his background and history in um, in the eye care space, as well as uh, as well as their team, Raul and Jamie, like these these people are like they're, they're thinkers in the industry at a level that I can't be at or I'm not at because I'm in the exam room some of the time and I'm you know doing podcasts and helping other people, right? 
So I, I, I wanted to harness and, and like bottle that up and put it into my practice so that we can blow up and explode in this myopia space. So best practices from around the world, uh, best practices from ar around the world as far as researchers, I wanted to bring in best practices into my practice for efficiency and uh, really harness all of this so that our myopia practice can go to the next level, right? I've set some goals that um, scare me a little and excite me a lot. I, I don't know that we're going to hit these goals. It's uh, quite honestly, it's ridiculous. Some of the goals that we have. Um, but if I don't encounter those kids, they are going to develop and progress in their myopia, right? Uh, unless there's somebody else nearby that is also taking care of them. But the reality is um, we have to have 10, 20,000 eye care providers in the United States encountering hundreds of children each. It's not happening, which means that there is some of us a small group of us that need to be in the thousands. And the beauty about that is there's a lot of people in treehouse eyes that are saying, I'll, I'll do it. They're raising their hand and they'll say, I will take that on. I will become a specialist in this area. And because that is the case, that's the group of people that I wanted to surround myself with. Now that doesn't mean that I don't think that other people who aren't in treehouse eyes are losing out or missing out on uh, being able to see myopic patients by no means. I've done it for very well for a very, very long time. But for me, I wanted to go to that next level. And the cost is, is minimal with regards to what we're accomplishing. So if, if you're somebody who's thinking about it and you're like, hey, it's way too expensive, the reality is it's not. It's one or two more patients a month. And but if if you're wanting to see 10, 20, 50, 100 more patients a month, then that's you know really a minimal cost. So uh yeah, that's uh the top reasons, uh top five reasons I joined Treehouse Eyes. I'm gonna be digging into a little bit more of what it's bringing to my practice, how we're using those in, in our practice to be better. Um, they have some secret sauce that I can't share with you, which I wasn't shared uh, until I became uh, part of the team. Um, and uh, I do, I do want to disclose that I'm paying the same amount as everybody else. Um, some people might think, oh, well, because you're a speaker or you're a you know podcaster that you uh, get some special privileges. That's, that's not the case. I uh, I, I, my credit card gets charged on a monthly basis, just like anybody else. And so, um, if you think that I'm, you know, putting this out there in, in, in an effort to, uh, you know, do anything other than share my experience, this is, this is really where it's at. So, uh, feel free to reach out, ask questions. I'm sure I'm going to get lots of emails and text messages, uh, or, um, finding on social. If you do want to reach out to me at Dave Kading, um, you're welcome to do so. And I'd, I'd love to connect with you and, uh, and spitball what are ways that you're doing, uh, what are, what are the things that you're doing to make your practice explode in the next coming years? Thank you for joining me for this episode. Make sure to like and subscribe. Please share this episode with a friend. Um, we don't charge for these podcasts. And so the best way you can uh, thank me back is to share it with somebody else so they can get that information as well. Thanks a lot for your time. And we'll see you next time on the Myopia Podcast. One, two, three, thank you for tuning in to the Myopia Podcast. If you enjoy our content, please leave a five-star review and don't forget to subscribe for more great episodes.